Hello, people joining. Welcome to Hope Sparks, inspiring conversations with families and educators. I'm Hope, a mama of two and education innovation specialist. Today, I'm really excited to introduce a super inspiring guest, Kate Stone. She is um, a leader in inner education for young women's mental, emotional, and physical health. We're gonna find out about what that means today. She's the creator and founder of HeartSpeak Empowerment School for Teen Girls, coming to us from Ojai, California. Welcome, Kate. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Sunny Ojai to Chile, Quebec. <laughs> You're, yeah, it's warm here. <laughs> you're bringing your inspiration and your sunshine. Um, yeah, <laughs> literally shining through the window right now. <laughs> I can see it. It's lovely. Well, I'm so pumped to dive in today and hear about you, hear about your program. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that there's a number of parents tuning in today. Um, I know you're focused on teen girls, but I feel like your message will probably reach parents of teens all over. Yeah. Um, I'd love to start out by you sharing a bit about you and why you started HeartSpeak Empowerment School. Want to yeah. take a crack at that? Yeah. That's How far do you have to go back? How far? I mean, I will, I'll keep it, I'll keep it tidy and share just a little bit about, you know, I, I just remember my own teenagehood and it was really tumultuous and, mm. you know, for me, I didn't have, um, you know, my, there was a lot going on in my family. My mom was a single mom, you mm -hmm. know, and as teens do you, at a certain point, you stop going to your family or your parents or the adults around you. And you start looking to your peers. Like that is a teen's biggest influence. Yeah. You know, the, the people, the, the peers around them. So, um, so, you know, I got into a lot of trouble and I was very rebellious and, you know, eventually that road led me to really getting in touch with a lot of deep suffering within myself um, mm -hmm. that I just wasn't ready to deal with and that no one around me was helping me to manage. And so I ended up um, after I, you know, and this went on probably until my early 20s um, when I left to do a teaching fellowship in Asia. And, you know, I remember being on this beach in India and realizing, wow, I, you know, I, everything I tried to seek for outside of myself, you know, this idea of uh, chasing idols mm -hmm. um, and how important that is to our development, really, you know, mm -hmm. to go out and, and chase those idols and have those experiences and, and look for what you think is missing within yourself. I realize I still feel the exact same way. Nothing has changed the common denominator is me. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I got into, um, 12 step Al-Anon. My father is a recovering alcoholic. So I ended up in the 12 step rooms, uh, when I was 22. Um, and I, I guess I was unusual in the way that I was seeking answers in a very focused way. I wanted somebody to tell me why I felt the way I felt. Mm. Why things were so, uh, why I felt so sad, why I suffered so much mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And this was the first place that I discovered answers, a solution, tools, people who were, you know, human and talking about their humanity in a, from a very vulnerable place, from a very like, I could, I could relate with them. And I could see that if I kept following this path of self-inquiry, of self-examination of, of, you know, becoming more present, more loving, more appreciative of what I, of what my life actually was that I, I could mm -hmm. see myself becoming an adult that I always wanted to be becoming that empowered adult. You know, I always had this vision of myself as this woman who was like a powerful and contained and of service and creative and really living a life that she was proud of and loved. And I just didn't know how I was going to get there. And this mm -hmm. was the place I found that was offering me a pathway forward. And so, you know, I 
I took that and I ran with it. And, and that sort of began. Uh, and this was 22. So you had your whole teen years of like searching and not getting that support from your family or school. Yeah. It was I mean, messy. Is, it was messy. I mean, that's what I, I also want to highlight is that there isn't always support coming from our families and our school system. And yeah. yeah. And you sought elsewhere. Well, you know, I think also what's really interesting, and I can kind of relate it back to what teenagers are talking to me about now, um, which is that, you know, I don't think it's an accident that they're, you know, growing up during the times we're in this mm. global transformation, this global evolution of consciousness, this awareness of how we're living and how it's not working and how it's potentially just destroying our planet and our society and our relationships and our connectivity to each other. Yeah. And so they're like, where are the adults? You know, where, like, you know, they look out at the world. And if you look at like anything mainstream, everyone's sort of behaving badly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone's mm -hmm. having these tantrums on a public stage. Yeah. And they're looking at that and they're going, uh, what's happening? Like, okay, if they can't manage their inner world, their judgments, their fears, their... Right you know, uh, emotions, mm -hmm. how would they expect me to become like, what, you know, so I think a big part of this is, you know, about modeling it and modeling a new way. And for us to model that we have to find our own new way. Right. And I think that is, you know, what heart speak is offering a new way forward. And, and we have to look at these Gen Z and go, God, these kids are actually like here to mm -hmm. pave the path and we have to give them that freedom and that leeway instead of plugging them into the old systems right. and expecting them to like you know just do what we've been doing which clearly hasn't been working um we have to give them other options or at least let them know that there are and it's it's sort of their their human journey to get to discover what those might be so you, on your own journey of self-discovery and inquiry, you built up resources, tools, learning, and trained yourself effectively on everything from, you know, writing to meditation to what, what are some of the practices that you wove into your program? Well, um, there's a few. So that's why, like, that's what I love about the program. It's kind of like, um, everything you could possibly need to transition into adulthood. And what's beautiful about it is that, you know, there's a lot of material. So mm. it covers a lot. You know, the very first week is about emotional agility. So mm. teaching about what emotions are, what feelings are, what's the difference, where do they come from, how do we interpret them, um, and then helping them understand that aspect of themselves, because most of them are fascinating. The emotional agility workshop is probably my most popular, uh, that very first module, because they're like, wow, like it kind of blows their mind, because they've never really- They're not learning that anywhere else. No, <laughs> they're Do not. you have parents saying, hey, hey, can I learn this alongside yeah. my child? Oh my gosh, yeah. parents all the time are like, uh, can I take your course? <laughs> so it's, it's like, I don't, I don't, this program is kind of like a miracle to me in a way. It, you know, um, just backing up a second, it, it came through um, Christmas of 2020 when I was, you know, I'm a college essay coach. That's, that's my, I've been doing that for 10 years. Um, so, you know, I saw my students, I was, you know, I, I wear a lot of hats mm -hmm. uh, and I noticed how much they were struggling. And I was like, there's got to be a way. And I had a student and I was helping her with her college essay process. And we would, it would be like half college essay process and like half therapy sessions, coaching sessions. Right. And I was like, I don't want this to, and she was like, I don't want this to end. And I was like, I don't want this to end. And I was like, okay, let me like go back and sit with this and try to come up with an, a way that, that we can continue this kind of connection and communication and engagement with each other mm -hmm. um, in some sort of structured way. And it was Christmas four o'clock in the morning, I was woken up with the entire curriculum downloaded in my mind. I went straight to my desk. I sat at my desk for 24 hours straight, writing the whole thing out. I spent the next three months developing the whole program, but it was like a complete, it was all there. It's like It was just there. 
I, I, it's, that's why I say it's a miracle. It's just, it's so, it was the oddest, most uplifting, most expansive experience of going, this is everything they need to know. <laughs> this is everything I needed to know, like 15 mm -hmm. years ago that I had to take 15 years to kind of like find and piece together. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think, you know, the emotional part of it, I love that that's the first module because it is so foundational. And not only do we talk about the emotions and what they mean and how do we interpret them and how do we, we talk about how we deal with them, how we manage them. So we mm. talk about emotional anchoring, safe place, a lot of like EMDR. I bring like many different therapies into this. So mm -hmm. I bring EMDR techniques. I bring in IFS therapy, which is parts therapy for anyone who doesn't know what that is. Richard Swartz, brilliant guy. Parts right. therapy, just in a nutshell, for those who don't understand, can you just give very high level? It's the idea that, you know, just how family systems work in the mm. external world, we have a family system inside our own psyche. Mm -hmm. And we have all these different parts, some play, uh, some play protector parts, we have critic parts, we have mm -hmm. very vulnerable parts that we've exiled through trauma, or, you know, whatever trauma can be on a massive spectrum. But it's how we start to take those parts and listen to them and talk to them and go, Oh, this part is activated. Oh, what is it saying? Within ourselves, within yeah. ourselves. Right. Exactly. So all the monkey mind, the voices, they all get to have their say and we get to connect and communicate and meet the, those parts, the needs of those parts. And as we communicate and build relationship and build trust with those parts of ourselves, mm. we can begin to integrate our mind back. We're not, Oh, we're not at war mentally. Mm -hmm our own mm -hmm. anymore it's really wow. really beautiful yeah that is so cool so you start with the emotion as mm -hmm. your foundation like the scaffold of everything and then can you share a bit more about what where do you take this and I'm going to dive into like who do you teach this to and in what setting I'm curious about all of it because I'm sure parents are listening thinking okay let me make sense of this program mm -hmm. that I didn't even know existed before yeah totally so from I emotion where do you go so we go from the emotion and then we shift into, because, you know, when I, I have this story that I always, that I tell a lot to the girls, um, about how, you know, our thoughts are, can, are connected to our emotions. So when we have a feeling about anything, we ask the question, what's the thought that comes before the feeling? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about using our emotions as like, uh, inner guidance system. Am I off track? Am I on track? How am I feeling right now? Checking in with ourselves, checking in with our emotions, becoming more conscious of, mm -hmm. uh, of our vibrational state of how we are, uh, feeling within ourselves. And when we do that, we, we, it's a great logical way to work backwards. Okay. We have, we're having this feeling. What was the thought before that feeling? It was this thought. Okay. That thought is also connected to a belief. So it's the idea that, these limiting beliefs are sort of the little voices in our head that are generating all of our emotions and our feelings. And we're wondering why we're being blown hither and thither. And all we need to do is start to examine, start to ask good questions. And right. I actually have like a, I have a list for the girls of 10 inner education questions for any situation. So it's like a way of gathering our power back instead of being like, this is my mind. I have no control over it. Right. Or going to our peers and asking them what we should do, which is typically what a lot of teen girls do. They, they attach to a pack and the pack, like a hive, tells them what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. And then we don't develop our own sense of self. So I love that mm -hmm. you're using that model where the paradigm or the belief is the starting point. But that mm -hmm. can be changed. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean, it, it is, I would say that the, that's my second module is the, mm. uh, overcoming obstacles. Um, and you know, I, I try not to get too in the week. Limiting beliefs can be a little bit, uh, meta for kids. You know, I think it's something that I, what I've done is I've, I've kind of stripped it back and yeah. I just go just ask questions. <laughs> okay. Don't get you too know. in, in it all. Cause they'll no. just switch off. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I think, I think it's like, you know, for me, I, I meet every group is different. So mm -hmm. I adjust my program. I just, I have these like incredible workbooks where, you know, they can go back to them and they can go back to the exercises and they can even go back to some of the lectures I've written. 
and just, you know, reread them and get refamiliarized with them. I have a student who just reached out to me the other day and she was like, I just went back to it. I've been thinking about HeartSpeak and, you know, she's reading through the workbooks again. And um, the most important thing for the second module is really about asking questions, asking the right mm-hmm. questions. And that's how we guide ourselves back to the source, understanding that we are the source of whatever we're experiencing and we're feeling. And when we understand where all of our emotion and our suffering or our confusion is coming from, Mm -hmm. we can begin to unravel it, detangle it. So empowering. It's so empowering. I mean, that is the work that the second module is really the work that changed my life. My mind was so overactive, high, mm. highly intellectual, highly um, up here, up here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so from there, where do they, they've got their foundation and then they're doing the work and then where do you take them? Then I start shifting them into the tools. So okay. once you have an understanding of, you know, the emotions, where that's coming from, the mm-hmm. mind the thoughts, mm-hmm. and how to navigate those two elements of themselves. Right we start to go, okay, well, whenever we have an issue or problem, it's like, what tools do I reach for? Okay. So we start with meditation and breath work. So I bring in expert teachers for like meditation okay, um, for a few different things. But you know, one of the things that I love is, is regulating the nervous system, which I know you've had Jenny on talking about that. And it's so important. Um, and teaching really, really simple tools like box breathing, just to Mm -hmm. bring the nervous system back into regulation, into calm, out of fight and fight or flight. I'm back to your comment about when teens or kids are looking out to the world and seeing so much dysregulation or humans behaving badly, mm-hmm. nervous systems out of whack. It's very difficult for them when they haven't had any exposure or training on how to regulate their own nervous system. So yeah. it's really important. And they're not getting it at school. I love that you're focused on this. You know, it's, I always think like parents and teachers are just absolute superheroes, Mm. but we, it's, there's a reason why we are a communal species. There's a reason why we evolved in villages and in community, you know, and how, how far away we've gotten from that communal, you know, experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And I am at, like a lot of parents talk to me, they want their kids to be exposed to different points of view, mm-hmm. to different people, to different, especially people who have had maybe nonlinear journeys like myself, very much like a uh, non-conventional uh, paths forward. I think, um, I think that's really valuable because there's a just, there's a billion ways to, to find your way in life. And it's kind of like, I come at that, I come from that perspective of like, Ooh, okay. Like that's another part of what I do is like, okay, what are you, what, you know, everything, the trail is like breadcrumbs. Okay. What's, what's the excitement today? How do we follow that excitement? And, you know, I love, I mean, for me, that's, that sparked in me because I am so passionate about showcasing so many other paths in life there isn't just one and i feel like there are very well-worn paths and very prescribed patterns that i think are causing pain for a lot of people people i'm working with entrepreneurs or seeing other teens or kids feeling like the path laid before them is not fitting them and so they turn into themselves and don't know what to do they feel like they don't fit in so they must be bad or wrong or something's wrong with them and I feel so inspired to shine a spotlight on people like yourself who are showing kids the way back to themselves that there are many ways to live your life I mean you're a living example for sure um, if we've got time, we can talk about your your winding path through the world and exploring uh, your own, you know, way in the world. But I think mm-hmm. it's only natural for you to include this in your program. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It really is like a when I'm teaching, I feel like in a way I'm like channeling. You know, um, mm-hmm. there are times where you know there are times where I'm in sessions and I get asked really hard questions. Um, you know about especially about, you know, 
how do we, you know, victimhood is like a big, um, it's a big theme in our culture right now. And it is something that I feel really, really strongly about that we can, we can have self-compassion and understanding and heal from that place. But we also have to recognize that like nothing happens to us by accident. Not we, we can take the every experience we have in our life and use it for the good. Mm. And that's, that's what I'm, that is my goal. That is what I'm doing with these kids. I'm teaching all these different things, but like the threat of it is like, you are the creator, mm -hmm. not, not the victim of your life. What is this? Okay. This situation as, you know, sucky as it might feel or is, mm -hmm. what is it asking you to develop in yourself? What is it asking of you? And, and Kate, do you get sometimes glazed eyes and people rolling their eyes going, oh, like, don't tell me that I can overcome this. My situation is really hard. You don't understand. Or when they hear you speak, are they genuinely like, wow, OK, this is possible. They're kind of stunned. Um, there's like a lot of sometimes I think truth is always true. That's what I think. And when anyone hears something true, mm -hmm. you feel it. It's like a feeling that you have. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember, you know, I grew up, my childhood was challenging. And I remember I would like sit with my grandma and, you know, she, in a way, looking back, she really uh, like embraced the victimhood of my childhood and kind of like felt bad for me and would like console me and I remember looking back on that like family dynamic and thinking, oh, that was just her way of loving. But when mm -hmm. someone comes to you and says, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not going to embrace that identity in you. You mm -hmm. are a powerful person. You mm -hmm. are capable of anything. When someone sees that in you, you rise to that. So there's this like moment. Possibility. Possibility. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And like, and the kids that I've I've shared this idea with, they're it's like a hopeful, it's hope that I see. Mm -hmm. And a kind of like, okay, this feels true. What, what okay, how do I, what is it asking of me? And it's kind of like they're working it out because they've never, it's a new perspective for them. They've they don't hear that regularly. Well, so okay, <laughs> tell me you work with girls teen girls and you're moving them through your program inspired mm -hmm. by your own experience and your own learning how mm -hmm. old are these girls and how are they finding you mm. so a lot of the girls um that i work with some of them in the previous uh heart speak groups have been girls that came through my college essay program okay um, because i would develop you know we're, i'm working with the college essay stuff for you know four to six months at a time so with one student yeah, okay. it's it's like pretty incredible. High pressure. Okay. To yeah, because you're you know you're working with them on 50, maybe fifteen applications, you know, twenty essays, and okay. and it's a creative, it's a very creative collaborative process. We're storytelling. The, mm -hmm. You know, I'm an editor, but I'm actually most of my job is is just going. How do we tell this story, right. and how do we organize it and structure it, and and also you know, it's self inquiry once again, mm -hmm. because, you know, what we, I sent out this email recently. Um, I did a breakdown on Harvard, the Harvard admission scandal. Mm -hmm. Anyone's familiar with that. And the, you know, I looked through the court documents and, and everything um, in, in the litigation process. And what we discovered about the admissions process, what I discovered was that it's all about personal development. It's all about personal development. They're looking for those students mm -hmm. who are not High performers, but are also self-aware and have been on a personal journey in themselves that makes them capable of, of, you know, I, I guess I would say performing at that higher level. Um, Wouldn't you say that's also what employers are looking for? Yes. Most employers. I mean, it's, this is something that is being, it's the unspoken um, sort of skill and emotional intelligence that is more and more applicable, but is not being taught in a prescribed yeah. way. And so there's that disconnect, which I'm sure you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny to me because I, I, you know, I, it's so important. And, 
it gets glossed over with like test scores and grades and extracurriculars, mm. but it's like, wait, well, wait, what, what is your actual day-to-day -day experience? Mm. What are the questions you have? And I had a student who he got into Stanford, brilliant kid. Mm -hmm. And I met with him for the first time last June. And I started to ask him some questions and he just looked at me and he was like, I can't believe I've never asked myself this before. <laughs> and I was like, it's okay. You know, you've been busy that like, in a way we've over programmed our kids. We've over scheduled them to the degree that mm -hmm. they don't really have room in their life to ask these questions or to have, um, to dream, to imagine, to have, you know, uh, space for this. Yeah. Which I really telling of our of the world we're in right now and and how needed <laughs> i agree i agree and i mean my children are younger um my daughter's 13 so i'm are you working with younger teen girls or are you mainly working with older teens and and i'd love to hear why girls and not co-ed um great question um so i work with the program is 15 to 25 okay and i had it that way because um, this, like this group was the youngest was 15 and the oldest was 23. Mm. And the reason why I think that's so valuable is because the younger girls get to hear from the older girls, mm. what their experience is, what their journey has been. Mm -hmm. And the older girls get to lead the younger girls. So they step into this space of mentorship and leadership mm. and showing up for the younger girls in our group discussions and the younger girls feel seen and appreciated. And there's this camaraderie and friendships that are born out of this. And it's kind of like I get to step back a little bit and, and let the older girls begin to step into these leadership roles. Wow. And it's really something to watch. And I, I think, you know, the idea that it was just young women was primarily because, you know, one of my modules is talking about sex and sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, but primarily just so that it's a safe space for, you know, that it, there's a kind of freedom in that, that there's a, there's it a makes sense. It totally makes sense. I wonder if, I mean, I, I'm a parent of, of a boy uh, and I do think that there are, there is a need for young men to have this kind of support as well. So mm -hmm. I wonder as you develop it, if there will be people reaching out saying, Hey, can you do a course for young men? I actually want to do a course for young men and that's, I'm planning that. Um, once I have time, this is, I can't tell you like how, how just how full this experience has been in terms mm. of creating this program, how much has gone into it, how much thought, how much writing, how much, how much creative work has gone into it. And I'm a perfectionist. I'm a Virgo. So I'm like, okay, we'll make this really, really solid. Got and it. Then we'll, and then we'll shift and spread it. But I, I think, you know, I've worked with a lot of teenage boys and um, I really resonate with teenage boys. Like I get, I seen, you know, my inner tomboy is like, I get you. I, mm. I really get you. And I think, I think just for me, I don't know what it is, but I, I do have this ability to connect with teenagers in this way where I get to just drop in at their level do you remember being a teen? Like that's something I've spoken to other people who are working with teens. They have this incredible innate ability to remember that feeling of being a teenager. And they just slip back into that skin, so to say. And do you? Do yeah. You do the same? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember it. So it's so funny because I'm in a I'm in a mastermind group with all of my friends from high school who I hadn't talked to since, you know, I hadn't talked to in like 10 years. And so we we come together, it's a spiritual mastermind. So we talk about spiritual concepts and every every mastermind group has a theme. And, you know, some of the things we talk about are are who we were back then. Mm -hmm. and, how, and there's even like amends that we've made between each other. Like so moments cool. that I hadn't even remembered or I'd forgotten or just, you know, weren't relevant to me, but somebody else had held on to it for 15 years. Wow. It's, it's really, really powerful. So it's funny that I started this, I, I went back into my past to mm -hmm. heal my teenagehood as I'm creating this program. Mm -hmm. Another sign for me that like, that it's, you know, there's this incredible weaving taking place, you know, yeah. with this program and with my life and just remembering back onto my teenagehood 
you know, we, we talk about this. We just had no idea. We had no, we had no understand. We had no touch point. There was Mm -hmm. no place to go, to go. How do I act? How do I behave? What's the right move in this situation? How do I show up in this situation? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think, you know, that you take all their teenage problems and you can, there, there are answers. They just aren't Mm -hmm. hearing. (laughs) They don't have access to them. So it's like providing access to these teenage problems that are actually, you know, ultimately, um, they're, they're foundational, they're sane foundational Mm -hmm. concepts. They're Mm -hmm. spiritually, uh, and they're spiritually logical. And they, the students really respond to the lo- the logic of it. This for me, this program is not woo woo. It right. is a logic. <laughs> I do this- love your mix though, because <laughs> there's some words that you use that might be categorized as woo woo. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really important to emphasize that logic and the truth. Like when you're speaking a truth, especially yeah. with young people, they will resonate with it. Um, I would love to hear some of any success stories or like working through with your first HeartSpeak groups, if you've had any sort of transformational experiences, because I know as a parent, I'm like, that sounds really cool, you know, theoretically, but what does it look like at the end of a team going through your program? What have they told you? um, I, it's kind of overwhelming. Like I almost get emotional thinking about it because I did not know just how powerful it was going to be when, mm. when I started it. I knew mm-hmm. that it was an amazing idea. I knew it was in, an inspired idea. Mm-hmm. I did not know how badly it was needed. And I didn't know how profound an effect it would have on the girls. Mm-hmm. Um, for instance, uh, without getting into any details, I had a student who had suffered a significant amount of trauma Mm-hmm. Um, and had been in therapy, you know, for three years, um, moving through that. Mm-hmm. Um, and when she came to me, um, this is this is sort of where a lot of hard questions came up, um, where sometimes I would just pause for you know thirty seconds before I answered, um, because it was so delicate and there was so so much care has to be taken with their experience and their psyche and their emotional state. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I saw um, just through the process of self-inquiry, just through the process of becoming aware of how holding on to the anger um, was hurting her. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, when we hold on to anger, we get depressed, right? All these anger emotions create depression, mm-hmm. inflict mm-hmm. this logical harm. Um, and by the end of the program, um, even her therapist had commented on it <laughs> that it, she made more progress in the seven weeks during art speak than she had in the three years of therapy. And now she's a leader at her, on her campus. She's in her first year of college. She's working mm-hmm. women's shelters. Um, she's finding her own way using that experience um, able to begin the process of forgiving that experience, mm. understanding what it's all for using, again, coming back to using those experiences for the good mm-hmm. and really stepping into, uh, leadership and a life changing, changing the narrative too, changing like in narrative. that supportive space. Cause I think the supportive space, as much as we as parents want to be that supportive space for our yeah. children who go through all sorts of manners of things that are not always in our control. Yeah. Knowing there is someone like you or someone like, you know, other people working with teens um, to be that sort of container vessel, safe yeah. space um, is yeah. really, really incredible. Um, it's, it's really just incredible to watch her bloom. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see. And yeah. um just, I, I take kid, I take the girls on a meditation um, towards the end of one of the modules and it's um it's I take them up this mountain and the mountain is their life and the mountain is also a rising frequency right more joy more excitement more creativity mm-hmm. and at every step of the way they're carrying this backpack and as soon as we get to a plateau 
I have them feel what they're what they're holding on to in their backpack. What is the weight in their bag? Hmm. And I have them set it down because you can't, if you want to continue up this beautiful mountain to newer sites and newer vision, hmm. you can't carry as much with you. You got to set things down. So that was a particularly powerful uh, meditation for a lot of the girls. And visuals, yeah. I find they stay with kids. I mean, they stay with humans. I think it's a very powerful way for them to keep those those visions. Yeah, it's just so cool. It's more broadly speaking as well. Um, you know, the girls the girls respond with, "Wow, it's just everything is so clear. I understand." Hmm. What do I have to do next? I understand because some some girls come to me, um, especially since COVID, everyone's in a state of like inertia. Mm -hmm. They're like, tr they're like trying, like, okay, I'm going to do this path. I'm going to do this. But like everything is sort of, I don't know what to do or how to move forward. I don't, I feel frozen. Yeah. It just, it loosens everything up. It mm. helps, it helps like them that. tune with themselves and their, that inner guidance system. Mm. Because is the this is the magic if 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 you don't have access to that that inner guidance system which actually we all do because it yeah. we have our feelings our feelings you know we've been taught our feelings are um irrational or unimportant but our feelings are so important and that there's a distinction between emotions and feelings mm -hmm. feelings are much more subtle mm -hmm. feelings speak to us they whisper so we have to be able to begin to discern what we're being asked to do, what we're being called to do, what's interesting to us, what's, what's exciting to us. Right. And the more broad response I've gotten is that they're more in touch with that. They're more uh, able to listen to that little voice that's speaking to them and to make decisions that are in alignment with that voice and their value system. Mm. So they're creating their own value system because they know this, the value system of the world is, they see how detrimental it is. They see it. They're, they're mm -hmm. really, like, they're really clear on that, but yeah. there's no one offering that they you know, we've trained them into, okay, sit down at your desk. I'm going to give you this work and you're going to do this. And, you know, they get out of high school. I'm like, is anybody going to tell me what to do? Yeah. You know? And it's yeah. like, no, nobody is. And that's not like, just out of high school. Okay. It's like <laughs> out of university. And then it's beyond that. And I, I work with people in their midlife who feel that way. So yeah. it, the earlier we can start. Yeah. Um, and on that note, there are going to be people watching this from mm -hmm. all over. And are there specific people like educators or platforms or areas that, you would like to appeal to or connect with mm. um, in the yeah. development of your program right now? Is it just in the States or are you, you moving it around the world? What does that look like? Well, that's a great question actually. And it's, it's something that I am, I've been working on for the last year. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought about taking the emotional agility course and introducing it to schools, mm -hmm. but for me, uh, again, like I have to practice what I preach so mm -hmm. I can have my ideas about how this is going to evolve the program mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm, this isn't my program. It's, it, it's came through me. So I right. have to be in service to it. So for now it's really, I'm collaborating with other people who are doing programs for young women. Okay. Um, been a lot of collaborations with other people who are doing similar work. Um, I'm working with schools uh, in my local area in Ojai in person. Mm -hmm. so we're mm -hmm. doing workshops coming. Oh, cool. Up. In person. Yeah. Yeah. Which wow. is really exciting. Um, and I'm headed to Bali for a few months this summer. So I'm going to be connected in with the green school. I'm going to reach out to you and find out who you know out there. I got some ideas already. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. But I think, you know, the evolution of this program, we have Heart Speak, which is like the flagship program. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want to make, I, I'm going to create a program that's focused mainly on emotions and okay. emotional ability. That I think is going to be the next step. And it's going to be a little bit shorter because the program, Heart Speak right now, it goes from, you know, meditation and breath work to embodiment, somatic body image, which is mm. a big deal for young girls. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and then we go into self-care. So managing stress, biohacking our biology, again, more tools for dealing with anxiety and stress. Cause that's so high. It's so at a peak right now. It's Especially like with social media and yeah, yeah, it is alarm bells going off. Exactly. Okay. So I will definitely get to work in connecting you with amazing people around the world. And if anyone's listening, um, they will, I'm sure, reach out to you. I'm curious to hear what your words of compassion and hope are for parents, parents who are struggling with not knowing how to support their teen girls right now. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts or anything you can share um, for parents who are just feeling it and mm -hmm. not sure where to turn or what to do? Oh. Just tuning in. You know, I think that when we l stop looking outwards at our kid, mm -hmm. I know how hard that is to mm -hmm. not do because we, as a parent, we're worrying about our kids all the time. It's like it's almost impossible to turn it off. Mm -hmm. um, stepping forward into that place of our own empowerment. How can I bring myself back to peace? How can I recognize that worrying is not loving? Mm. That imagining scary scenarios is not loving. Mm. That I can look at them and go, hey, this is a develop, this is a normal developmental process that we all go through. Mm -hmm. And just because it looks messy right now doesn't mm -hmm. mean that this experience isn't serving them and that they're not mm. their own having this experience for a particular purpose of which I am unaware because they mm. are their sovereign being. And it's, I think the hardest thing and, but the wisest thing we can do is to begin to um, not attach in those unhealthy ways around our, our child's stress and pain as hard as that is. And that is truly like that. I think that's really the number one uh challenge. That's beautiful. And I feel it. It's hard to unhook. Um, and I think we need gentle reminders regularly as parents to hear that. Yeah. And um, know and trust that when you are imagining the good and imagining the positive and knowing that everything is perfect the way it's playing out, as much as it might, might be really, really uncomfortable, mm. um, that 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 energy is going to emanate out to your kid and, and they will follow suit. You'd make the change in yourself. Your child will respond. Just yeah. focus on your own inner sanctity, your own inner sanctum and peace and being the model demonstrating you, you know, you and your child are, are transformation partners. Mm -hmm. You know, you brought them into this world. They're teaching you, you're teaching them. It goes back and forth all the time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But oh, I love that, Kate. Yeah, be kind and be gentle and and you know, don't get afraid that, you know, um you did a bad job. You didn't. You yeah. know, you're, you're doing the best you can with what you have and yeah, and it's all perfect. It's all just absolutely perfect as it is. I mean, I didn't have the perfect childhood. Mm. And thank God I didn't. I would not be the person. I wouldn't be as resilient as I am. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be as as understanding, I wouldn't be as aware and, um, and just, yeah, whole, 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 I can hold a lot. And a mm. child that's going through a lot right now is going to be able to hold a lot as they enter into adulthood, as they, mm -hmm. as they work with what they're being, what's being thrown at them right now. I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to keep reiterating it to <laughs> myself and my community. I, I absolutely love those words. Thank you. And thank you for for spending a little bit of your Monday morning with me. <laughs> I would I would love to leave it on how do people find you, Kate? How do they follow your adventures from Ojai to Bali? And how do they sign their kids up for HeartSpeak? Yeah. Okay. So they can go to parents out there. Um, head to uh, www.heartspeak.school. Um, and I have a few different things going on right now. So we're launching HeartSpeak again, the program for July 19th. Okay. 
Um, so that's the first thing. Um, and also I, I really wanted to offer girls a free community. So we meet monthly. Every week mm -hmm. is a new topic. I'm going to be bringing in teachers. Um, and the, our first free community uh, meeting is going to be on um, May, May 19th. And May 19th, okay. May 19th a Thursday, I believe it's a Thursday night. Um, and you can sign up for that at uh, heartspeak.school slash community. And you can find, you can navigate all this on my website. Um, I also offer individual empowerment coaching. If you want to work privately, I offer monthly subscriptions, one hour sessions, packages. So you can take a look at that. It's awesome. It's all very organized and, and very easy to find. I, well, I'm sure people will be reaching out. And May 19th, can people just hop on and be part of that community and just do one offs or do they join the whole? Okay. Yeah. I love it. I love all the options. But they do have to sign up because otherwise they won't get the emails and the sign up info. So at community, okay. you'll, you'll sign in. And the great thing is I, I have them give numbers, uh, phone numbers. So if you are signing oh. up, you're, <laughs> because, you know, Gen Z is not big on email. So no. the tech the text I'm going to be doing text blasts. You know your audience. I know my audience. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, I so love seeing your sparkly face today. Thank you for coming to us and good luck on your travels to Bali. I'll be following. Oh, I can't wait. I'll be in touch with you. Thank you so much for having me today. I hope this was wonderful. been a pleasure. Thanks, yeah. Kate. Bye. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everybody.